All right, check it out. Today we're getting into a little bit of a tutorial on how to mix your own mop paint at home. To get this started, you're gonna need some bucket paint, some roller paint, anything off the shelf that's gonna get you some high opacity as well as maybe a unique color. Headed into the hardware store, you could pay as much as like 30 bucks a gallon of roller paint. I'm definitely not paying that much for a single gallon, so I go after some of the kind of cheaper primers or even some of the oops paint. Basically, that's paint that's been returned. I got this gnarly fluorescent yellow color, and whoever was trying to paint a bedroom with that surely returned it, and I got maybe 75% off the original color happened to really work in my favor that I was going after some uh, bright reds and whatnot so I lucked out here with a nine dollar whole gallon and honestly just head in there they've got a little shelf off to the side with paint that's been returned and just as fate would have it I lucked out here so I'm certain that you guys can too tons of people are returning random blues and greens and whatnot from bedrooms that have gone awry and they picked the wrong color and now they're looking for a little shade that's mostly toned down so you're gonna get some of those more fluorescence and more high vibrance colors and honestly that works great for us so no complaints there. Most interior and exterior paints nowadays are latex based which can be reduced with water so you don't even need to buy an extra paint thinner but all this applies the same if you're gonna use an oil base and you need that extra paint thinner to reduce it down. The general recommendation for latex paint is only a half a cup of water for the entire gallon of paint. Now they use that as a kind of metric so you're not going to reduce it too far and you're going to lose some opacity. And honestly that doesn't quite reduce it far enough to get those solid drips. So you might even need to go a full cup, maybe even two cups depending on how you're going. But as always I recommend doing a little bit at a time, maybe pull out a quart of the paint, slowly put some water in it, throw it in a mop at home, test that out. And that way before you totally mix down the entire entire gallon, you're going to pick a nice ratio to mix it down to. So the one hesitation here is you're not going to get those perfect tags that you'd find from brands that are really tailored towards graffiti that are going to have those crazy drips but aggressive opacity. You're going to have this lighter opacity but at the end of the day you're going to have a much cheaper alternative and you're going to have a way to actually make it at home. So the reduction of water or paint thinner won't add any body to the paint. It'll make it much thinner and much less opaque the more you add, so be very careful. I probably have a couple quarts of paint here and maybe added half a cup at most. And what I find is that gives a nice happy medium between pressing hard on the mop, getting nice drips when I want to, but also it not kind of running crazy and getting too thin on me. At the end of the day, you've got a $10 investment here, so there's a ton to play around with. Feel free to try and maybe mix in some primers and some underlayers that one will lighten up your color but also add a little bit thicker body primers have a ton of more opacity than your general paints there are a ton of roller brands that claim you don't need an under base you can go right onto the wall which is true because for them most people are painting over a white wall or something a little bit less opaque but for us out here you're gonna want to find something that has a little bit bigger body so looking for those paints that have those deeper primers in them or even throwing a little primer on the base will help you get started in a perfect direction make sure your opacity is up there before you even start reducing it down so it thins out for the mop. So I'm running this first set of tags with a little bit thicker of a formula and it's working great. You can see there's not a ton of drips going on. I'm squeezing pretty hard anytime I really need to get the drips going but that's a great starting point point. and honestly this fluorescent color is far less opaque than some of those deep blues and purples you might be grabbing. So as we do reduce this you're going to definitely be able to see when that paper starts coming back through the more water we add. So adding a little bit more water to the mixture and refilling this mop you can see the drips are coming in full force. Definitely loosen everything up. I don't have a regulator in this mop, so it's moving just as fast as it would. And honestly, you can see a teeny bit of that paper coming through. As I move forward, I'm gonna be adding a little bit more water, so keep an eye out for the tags actually lightening up. And at the end of the day, this is gonna be a mixture that you're going after. Depending on your surface, depending on your application, you're gonna want different opacities as well as you're gonna want different drip levels. With just this simple two-part formula, it's gonna be hard to compete with the graffiti brands that are totally designed to make sure you get the maximum opacity for drip ratio. But honestly, you're gonna get 90% the way there and for $10 for a whole gallon plus whatever you reduce it by you know this is such the budget buy. I would be surprised anybody that's getting out there not rocking something like this for that DIY and just pushing it out to the masses. All the names I'm hitting up here came from the hand mix streaker review video. I basically ask everybody throw your name in the comments and I'll hit it up and turns out it's so much fun to grab everybody's tags put together some letter combos I've never hit before and give a shout out to everybody that's thrown some support so feel free to leave a comment in this video if you want to get feedback 
featured in the next kind of review or tutorial video. Anytime I get a chance to burn some new tags, I'll be sure to grab this video's feed and uh, get that worked in the mix. So the inspiration of this video came from my desire to make some really messy and grimy tags. I wanted to try out putting my recipe into some squeezers, so I picked up some of those kind of tie-dyeing bottles. They have a nice small funnel tip so you can cut them real close to the end, get some real accurate tags, or you can cut them close to the top and get some extra messy and a lot of paint coming out. So I was going after this really wet style that I wanted to get, you know, a ton of paint on the page, which the squeezer is great for. You can really load it up and then almost build up the edges of it and then fill the middle so you get a nice bevel and the lighting looks great on these. So I was throwing these down, trying to make a digital design that later I'd throw on some hoodies. And honestly, the red looked great. The aluminum foil was a kind of forethought that maybe I could peel off the final letter and then have a solid little piece, but that didn't end up working out so great. Had a recommendation to throw maybe some rubber cement into the mixture so it would give it a little bit less bonding to that aluminum foil. So maybe that's a project in the future. The Sharpie outline worked great to give some boundaries to my piece and then basically just filled it in with a ton of paint and that gave it a nice little bevel look. I took a variety of photos trying to get a scape of where the lighting would capture and show that kind of contour and then threw that into Photoshop and worked through that. Honestly, didn't end up using a ton of the photos that I took with the kind of glossiness of it. Didn't really translate just as I wanted so maybe there's an opportunity to revisit that as well. So I ended up just throwing some nice bevel and shadow and shading on it gave it still that 3d look and then uh, and then broke it down into some half tones so you could get a little bit of variety from a nice yellow to a quick little orange down to a, like a deep red at the bottom of the design winter is in full force out here in Colorado we got maybe 20 inches up in the mountains over this past weekend so I figured it might uh, tag along to that throw this together in a little bit of a lookbook and share it with you guys I hope you enjoy the design and feature let's get into it yeah. So this design was a ton of fun to make from just getting all those tags on paper, getting a little bit of inspiration from that, and then throwing it into the squeezer and getting some of that almost 3D look with all those shading and coloring was a ton of fun. I took that as a great starting point, threw it into Photoshop, and actually brought it up into kind of that comic book style with all the half tones. got that gradient going, then got all the white shadowing and shading on top, then even through that black drop shadow with also the half tone below, really makes this design pop off. And honestly, I'm super pumped with the outcome. I think this works great off that camouflage, and I've stuck with definitely solid color stuff prior to this, but it was fun to double down and go for the camouflage and the gradient fill, and I hope you guys enjoy that as well. So I made a few of these up, if you want to support the channel and check them out, head over to my web shop and I've got them listed over there. I've got a few days left to get these out before the holiday season, so maybe this could serve as a late addition to that holiday list. Also, definitely don't forget to let me know if you try out the recipe of this mop. You know, I had some pretty good successes here. Maybe you've got a tip or two about throwing some primers or other additives in there to make the formula even that much stronger. With that, I hope everybody has a great holiday season. That's going to do it for me, guys. Peace.